Every year we make it a goal to maximize our available gardening space. It can definitely become a challenge to do this, scheduling which plants are going into your garden at what time, and making sure that you're spacing all of your plants properly. So whether you just have a single raised bed or a small garden plot or even just a balcony for some container plants, these five tips are going to help you maximize that space. Before I get into it, if you happen to be growing tomatoes this year, we have an all new free ebook on how to grow tomatoes from seed to harvest. So if you want instant access to that PDF, check out the link in the description below. So the first tip to maximize your gardening space is to grow your plants vertically. There are many different plants that prefer to grow vertically up a trellis or a large stake, things like peas, cucumbers, pole beans, melons, certain types of spinach, and many flowers like morning glories and nasturtiums. However, growing vertically doesn't have to stop there. You can also grow things like tomatoes, which are not natural climbers, up a vertical support system in order to keep them up off the ground and provide better aeration. But the main benefit of growing vertically is to save space. So by attaching your tall growing plants like tomatoes and cucumbers to a tall support system, you'll take full advantage of all of the vertical space that you have available. Consider the alternative if you don't provide support for your plants to grow upright, Tomatoes will sprawl along the ground, taking up excess space in the garden. Cucumbers and melons will also do the same, taking up vast areas in the garden. And most of these plants will benefit in other ways from being grown vertically, including avoiding disease, keeping the plants and fruits clean and out of the soil. And also in the case of cucumbers, you'll end up with straighter fruits. Now, when it comes to actually providing the support, there are a number of ways to do it, but it can be as simple as a main central stake right alongside the base of the plant. And throughout the season, you can attach your plant to that stake, providing that upright support. Tomato cages, which you can buy at the store, usually aren't very good for growing tomatoes, but they are useful for things like peppers and eggplants, plants that have a tough time standing upright, but really should be grown vertically or you can get a little bit more fancy and create some form of trellis. A common way of doing this is by using cattle panels to provide either a flat trellis or to bend and create an arch, which you can walk underneath and grow the plants over the top. But the goal is really simple, provide some form of sturdy support in a vertical fashion, usually along the north side of the garden where the tallest plants will be growing so that they won't shade out the smaller plants in front of them. The next tip to maximize your garden space is to interplant smaller crops alongside larger ones. So things like garlic, onions, small flowers, and also herbs are great companion plants to plant around the base of your larger fruiting crops. So like I just mentioned, it's always best to plant the largest plants on the back side of your garden and then plant lower growing plants in front of them so when the sun comes across the sky, all of them get plenty of sun. So you can plant things like alyssum or cilantro right around the base of your tomatoes and peppers and other plants that grow to be pretty tall to take full advantage of the space that's right around those plants. Lettuce is another crop that is great to plant around the base of your plants. And you can actually get creative with the shade that your larger plants cast by planting lettuce on the shadier side during the summer months to provide a little protection from those hot temperatures. One other little tip if you plan on doing this is to bottom prune your larger plants. So if you have a tomato planted in the ground, I always suggest removing the bottom six to 12 inches of foliage so that none of the lower leaves are touching into the soil, which helps the tomato by reducing the chances of disease, but will help those other crops that you plant along the base of the plants in getting as much sun as they can. The next tip for maximizing your garden is planting ahead of time. Now I'm gonna break this into two categories, the first of which is utilizing the cold season to grow cool season crops. Your raised bed in the spring can have totally different plants than it will have later in the summer. There are some crops that just can't handle midsummer heat, but they do really well in the shoulder seasons, the spring and fall months. So things like lettuce, peas, broccoli, beets, radishes, bok choy, arugula, and mustards are all great cool season crops that can be grown in the early season. So doing a little planning ahead and planting those cool season crops earlier and getting them out as soon as the soil is ready allows you to take full advantage of your garden throughout the season. And then the best part is when your tomatoes and peppers and cucumbers and other warm season crops are ready to be transplanted out, those cool season crops should just be wrapping up production. The second category is succession planting. There are some crops that will give you a single flush of fruits or leafy greens, and then the plant is basically done, but there's no need for that soil space to go to waste once you harvest the plant. 
So things like lettuces, bush beans, carrots, turnips, and even determinate tomatoes can all be succession planted. And what that means is basically you plant seeds on a regular basis so that you have new young plants to replace those that have finished. To put it another way, if you're planting seeds regularly, later on you'll be harvesting those plants regularly as well. So you won't just end up with one giant harvest of bush beans, you can have them more spread out throughout the season. And by planting in advance, that soil will never go to waste. As soon as you harvest that head of lettuce, you'll have another seedling ready to take its place. The next tip to maximizing your garden space pertains to container gardeners, and that is to plant in appropriately sized pots. Large fruited plants typically need the most space, so think beefsteak tomatoes or bell peppers, poblanos, eggplants, and even melons. They'll need at least five to 10 plus gallons of soil space. But if you're growing smaller varieties like cherry tomatoes or chili peppers, you can definitely get away with using a smaller container. If you're very limited on space and you're growing in pots, you can actually restrict the growth of some plants by using a smaller container. You'll end up with smaller plants, of course, and also a lower yield, but that may be a sacrifice you're willing to make to make your space work for you. My advice would be to prioritize the crops that you know you'll use most by giving them as much soil space as possible and then limiting the soil space of those that are less important to you. And the last tip to maximize your garden space is to use the square foot gardening method. If you haven't heard of the square foot gardening method, it's basically the process of breaking down your raised beds or garden beds into single one by one foot squares. From there, you can decide how many of each crop will go into each square foot it differs based on what you're growing, of course, and it basically takes the guesswork out of plant spacing. We actually have an article on how to use the square foot gardening method, breaking down how many of each crop will go in a square foot. So if you wanna check that out, that link will be in the description below. But as soon as I learned about square foot gardening, it really clicked with me personally. It's just a very simple, straightforward process of dividing up your raised beds into equal size slots and then planning your garden around that framework. So for a few examples, you can plant around 16 radishes in a single square foot, or you can plant one kale plant or nine garlic plants. Square foot gardening tends to be on the more intensive side of things. And by that, I mean planting things very close to one another to try to maximize the soil space. And in some cases, the spacing can actually be a little bit too close in my opinion. For example, a tomato needs more than a single square foot to grow to its full potential. Same thing with cabbages and other brassicas. But for smaller crops, this method is invaluable. What other methods do you use to maximize your garden space? We would love to hear them in the comments down below. We're always looking for new ways and techniques to get the most out of our garden, so please share those down below. Thanks for watching Geeky Greenhouse and I'll see you next time.